This talk is on exploring complex systems through computer models. In this talk, I'll introduce complex systems, describe what they are, why we study them, and how we study them. So if we take apart the words that make up complex systems, maybe we can get some insight into what they are. So what is a complex system? Well, complex is an adjective, meaning difficult to understand or difficult to predict. And system is a noun. It's a group of interacting, interrelated, or interdependent parts forming a whole. A complex system is defined as a collection of simple units or agents interacting in a system. Large-scale behaviors of the system are difficult to understand or difficult to predict and may change, evolve, or adapt. So as you can see, a complex system is more than the sum of the two parts, complex and system. Um, sometimes people think that a watch or a clock is a complex system. It's difficult to understand because it has many interrelated parts, and those parts make up a whole. But in fact, a watch is not a complex system. It doesn't change, it doesn't evolve, and it doesn't adapt. Let's look at some characteristics of complex systems. Complex systems are leaderless, meaning that there is no leader that is telling all the other agents what to do. Another way to put this is by saying that the system is decentralized. Here's a classic example. Residents in Patton Bridge have been spending their winter afternoons watching millions of starlings as they swoop and gather on time for their evening roost. At first, just a few of the birds can be seen in disguise. Then, as darkness draws in, they gather together to create a dramatic sight against the backdrop of the shat fowls. It was once thought that this phenomena of birds flocking was caused by a leader bird that was being followed by all the other birds. In the 1980s, a fellow named Craig Reynolds came up with three simple rules with which he could simulate flocking behavior. These rules were based on individual birds, and each bird steered to avoid crowding local flock mates steered towards the average heading of the local flockmates, and steered towards the average position of local flockmates. With these three simple rules, he produced animations of birds flying in flocks. This computational experiment provide evidence that it might not be necessary to have a leader bird or a leader to produce flocking behavior. Another characteristic of a complex adaptive system is that emergent patterns develop from the simple interactions between agents. A classic example is that of termites and their mound building. Here's a model of mound building in star logo TNG. In this model, there are termites and wood chips. The wood chips are the yellow cubes. Termites follow three simple rules. They wander around the environment until they run into a wood chip. When they find a wood chip, they pick it up and carry it. They roam around carrying the wood chip until they run into another wood chip, at which point they drop the wood chip they're carrying next to the existing wood chip that they ran into. So with these simple rules, we see how mounds can develop. It's important to note that nowhere in this model were termites given the direction to form just a few very tall mounds. Yet through their collective action, this is what happens. Complex adaptive systems are also characterized by having nonlinearities. By a nonlinearity, we mean the sum of the parts is not equal to the whole. 
In mathematics, this can be described as following. A function of a plus b is not equal to the function of a plus the function of b. An example is the exponential function. f of 5, or 5 times 5 equals 25, is not equal to f of 2 plus f of 3. f of 2 equals 4, f of 3 equals 9, and we see 25 is not equal to 13. Another characteristic of complex adaptive systems is self-organization, and by this we mean the system organizes itself. A classic example is the Schelling segregation model. Schelling was a social scientist working in Chicago in the 1970s. He was studying how segregation forms. His model at that time was a grid of pennies, and he had rules by which pennies moved or stayed put. We have a net logo model of the same experiment. Here we see there are 2,000 agents. They're either green or red living in a two-dimensional grid. Each agent has a percentage of similar neighbors that they want, and by percent similar wanted, we are saying what percentage of those neighbors need to be of the same color as myself in order for me to be happy and stay where I am living. Now we'll run this experiment first with the percent similarity wanted at 75%. So at 75%, which means that 6 out of the 8 people, neighbors around me, need to look like me in order for me to stay put, we see patches, large patches, of red and green neighborhoods forming with not much intermixing. Then if we run the same experiment with 50%, 40%, 30%, and 20% as the percent similar wanted, we see that somewhere between 20 and 30% there's a point where few people move. But it just takes 30% the desire to have 30% of the people around me look like me for neighborhoods, distinct neighborhoods, segregated by color to appear. So to review, four characteristics of complex adaptive systems that we've seen are leaderlessness, in other words, there is no leader, emergent patterns, these are patterns that develop from the simple interaction of agents, Nonlinearity, the sum of the parts does not equal the whole, and self organization, the system organizes itself. Why is it important to learn about complex systems and approaches to understanding complex systems? It's because many of the daunting problems of the 21st century can be studied as complex systems problems. We have climate change, pollution, spread of disease, traffic jams loss of biodiversity and ecosystems, civil violence, emergency evacuation or egress, and forest fire spread. These and many other problems can be studied as complex systems problems. Here's some examples. Epidemics are studied as complex systems because humans travel and have social networks through which they transmit disease. We see emergent patterns forming, such as pockets of resistance and new outbreaks. The internet is a complex system. It exhibited nonlinear growth. It is adaptive. Through local interactions, a global structure has come about. And it is self-organized. Scientists study ocean currents and circulation, the ecosystems around these areas. Transportation systems are studied to avoid cargo bottlenecks, workflow simulations. It's when people want to design products and get them out to market with the fewest bottlenecks in their systems. Crowd dynamics. How do you get thousands of people to safely evacuate from a park when there are few exit routes and some of the exit routes are limited to foot traffic over bridges? 
In this course, we'll learn more about agent-based modeling and simulation as an approach to understanding complex systems.